Hey everybody, Ramblin' Pam here. Have you ever ridden the Amtrak Zephyr across the Rockies in the wintertime? Well, in my book, this is a must-see adventure. We started out in the suburbs of Denver, Colorado at Arvada. Arvada was the site of the first gold strike in Colorado. Soon we were climbing the front range of the Rockies, headed towards the west coast. We're going to travel through 31 tunnels between Denver and Winter Park. A few miles outside of town, we pass through the town of Clay. I read in the Amtrak brochure, winds in this area are so strong that hopper cars are welded to the rails on an adjacent track and filled with sand to use as a windbreak. The Moffat Tunnel takes the Zephyr through the Rockies and across the Continental Divide. Ski Resort is located in Fraser and runs right along the railroad tracks at the Moffat Tunnel West Portal. Here's an interesting bit of information for you. Fraser and International Falls, Minnesota have argued for years over who can claim the nickname Icebox of America. Leaving the town of Granby, we start to parallel the Colorado River. It leads to Gore Canyon, a place where only railroad tracks or kayak can take you. Next was Glenwood Springs, Colorado. It's known for its hot springs. It's also where Doc Holliday, famous for the gunfight at OK Corral, spent his final days. We pass by Newcastle, known for its mining economy. However, the high levels of methane gas were the cause of several explosions and the end of mining in the area. One of the last explosions caused a fire that still smolders to this day. Next was Elko, Nevada. It was the beginning of the gold rush days. People started moving into Elko around 1868. It was located at the east end of the railroad tracks built by the Central Pacific Railroad. This was the portion of the first transcontinental railroad built from California to Utah. Did you know that Elko is literally a gold mine? Nevada produces more gold than most countries, but the town of Elko has most of the gold vein. We pass by Winnemucca, Nevada, named after Chief Winnemucca from the local Northern Paiute tribe who lived in this area. It was a major distribution point for the Central Pacific Railroad. On September 9, 1900, Butch Cassidy's gang robbed the first national Winnemucca bank of $32,640. Most people know Truckee for the tragic expedition of the Donner Party. The town got its name from a Paiute Indian guide whose name sounded like Troquet but the white man nicknamed him Truckee. He was a favorite of the settlers who found him to be helpful and honest. 
This was an awesome little town. It was straight out of a postcard. On October 28, 1846, Donner Lake is where the Donner Party approached the pass and found it clogged with snow. Norton lies along the First Continental Railroad, one and a half miles past Donner Pass. As of the 2016 census, they had a population of 27. Colfax was named after Schuler Colfax, the 17th Vice President of the United States. This was also a really scenic little town. The town of Roseville marks the junction of the Central Pacific and the California Central Railroad lines. In the early 1900s, the railroad roundhouse and repair facilities were moved to Roseville from nearby Rockland. On April 29, 1973, a series of explosions ripped through a munitions freight train at the Southern Pacific Railroad Yard in Roseville and could be heard 40 miles away. The train had been headed for Vietnam. Physical evidence confirmed that first explosions were centered at a DODX type boxcar loaded with 250 pound bombs. As we descended down out of the mountains, I was just a little sad to leave the snow behind. We ended our trip at the beautiful historic depot in Sacramento. We saw some of the most beautiful scenery on this trip. It's been one of my most memorable Amtrak trips ever. We'll catch up with you guys down the road. Bye.